Ardas the robotic technology was a breakthrough technology in the hair restoration. Our robot here um, in New Horizon uh, Center for Robotic Hair Transplantation was introduced over three years ago, right after it was approved by the FDA. Uh, and it was one of the first uh, robots in the world. I was concerned about hair as of 10 years probably, but there was never a chance to kind of follow the dream to get the hair back. The robotic procedure is basically the same as uh, uh, time-proven follicular union extraction, but because of the computerized uh, system that measures the angles, the depth, the, the, the definition of the hair, the quality of the hair, uh, it puts this all in the algorithms that allow us to, to remove the hair follicles faster, better and less injured. I was considering other options, but uh, that was kind of hard uh, for me and it was looks and sound painful. All these things that uh, men are worrying about and the really uh, men are not the best patients to deal with the uh, you know, surgical procedures and the recovery, all, this, uh, all of this is taken away uh, from the equation. I didn't realize that you can go and uh, have a hair done within one uh, day. This is how we're going to distribute the hair. The front frontal hairline is going to be restored and we have a measurements and uh, marks for the frontal hairline. And then we're going to do a second zone in, behind it, uh, which will be much less density, just to fill up the gaps in, in his uh, hairs. And then we're going to do the crown. At this moment, crown is done only by hands. Okay, now we're going to transfer it to the robot, uh, and that this contains the plan uh, for our operation today. As you can see uh, during this um, uh, presentation of uh, one of the cases that we performed in our clinic, uh, the patients um, uh, spend their first uh, couple hours uh, in the position uh, reminding us of massage table. Now we're going to harvest the, start the harvest on the back of the head of the follicular units. So I'm going to apply the tensioner here to make the scalp tense and uh, then the robot is going to come over the head and start uh, harvesting. I always tell the patients that it's a little bit of like flying uh, long distance on the airplane that you can uh, get up to the bathroom, you can have some lunch, but generally spend your time in your chair. The procedure is so simple and uh, so unpainful that I was able actually to send some emails, uh, business emails, uh, during the, uh, the procedure. Uh, didn't stop me to do that. So what we see here is the, the robot is uh, making a punch first with the skin. And these are actually the pictures of these punches that we uh, just did. Uh, so as it goes, it takes a picture of the positioning of the needle. And so the first is the sharp punch that creates a nick in the skin. And then the blunt needle comes out and drills around the, the follicle. So it, it releases it. And then uh, the technician is picking up the hair from the back of the scalp. Uh, and the green dot is uh, the place where actually the harvest is happening right now. And the, uh, maroon dot is the next side. So I can control here the depth, the, the angle, and the advancement of the uh, harvesting, but generally it's uh, most of these parameters are ca calculated by the robot. But until uh, a few months ago, uh, the sites uh, or holes that actually are made uh, with the needles to, to position the graphs are, were made manual. And uh, now our center was chosen as the first one in the world to, to be a commercial site for this uh, part of technology. And we are able now to not only retrieve the grafts from the back of the head, but also uh, create sites. So, so what's the advantage of the uh, site creation with the robot? Uh, first of all, it's very reproducible. The robot does it very quickly in a very um, a systematic manner, but also it can avoid existing hair. So that's very important because a lot of uh, patients, of course, have their existing hair and uh, we don't want to injure them. If you do it by hand, if you do it uh, manually, of course, you try to avoid that too. But when, let's say, you do 2,000, 3,000 holes, ch chances are that some of the hair will be transected which uh, uh, robotic te technology avoids by mapping uh, the existing hair. So uh, as you can see on the videos here, uh, showing us the, the, uh, the site making technology, the, the computer um, actually identifies uh, hair and we can actually select the hairs that are healthy versus the ones that are not healthy. 
by thickness of the uh, existing hair and we can avoid the good hair, go through the you know, hair that is already terminal hair that is not going to produce a nice result and this way um, fill up the areas that needs to be filled versus avoid the areas that are still covered by the existing hair. Uh, we also added uh, another uh, part to the procedure which is a PRP injection. This is a platelet rich plasma by many people maybe known as vampire facelift because it's the same type of technology is used to rejuvenate the face um, uh, and popularized in the cosmetic uh, uh, medicine but uh, we actually use it uh, to promote the hair growth and hair healing of the donor sites. So after the hair is harvested uh, from the back of the scalp and the sites are made, the um, uh, small amount of blood is drawn from the, from the patient, then spun uh, down um, uh, in the centrifuge to select uh, platelet uh, and separate platelet rich plasma from the rest of the blood. So this is a uh, rest of the blood and this is plated to rich plasma on the top of that. So this is what we're going to use and we're going to actually mix it a little bit because there are different fractions of it and in, in, sometimes we use just the top of it but for today's purposes we will use the... And then it's actually re-injected to, to the uh, recipient sites and also to the donor site uh, providing uh, new nutrients and new um, uh, modalities to, to help the healing and grow of the hair. The rest uh, of the uh, procedure uh, is performed manually. Uh, the sites are already made, the grafts are harvested and checked under the microscope for quality and uh, sometimes separated into uh, uh, single grafts if we need to have um, uh, a lot of single grafts in the front of the hair. And then the manually they are transplanted into the scalp. As you can see, the process is very streamlined and um, uh, as comparison to previous uh, non-cosmetically um, co acceptable hair transplants, today hair transplants are very acceptable and actually, uh, I would say even more, they are undetectable. A lot of my friends were surprised that uh, I didn't have no scars on my head and everything cures within the days and uh, I really had to explain to them the procedure, which I was very proud because it was a very interesting experience. Even experts like myself uh, cannot sometimes tell if somebody had a hair transplant or not. So that's of course the goal and I'm a plastic surgeon, we are uh, also performing other types of uh, cosmetic procedures and the goal is always to, to provide our patients with the results that are uh, enhancing their appearance but not, they not necessarily detectable. They, the ideal result of uh, any plastic surgery is to, to achieve the results without uh, detection. I will definitely recommend to any of my friends who uh, would like to have a, a hair bag. I would like to, uh, as a matter of fact, I already talked to a couple of uh, friends of mine. They were very anxious to see me and they're actually monitoring my hair more than I do.